Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to be looking at the slope-intercept form of a line today, often known as y equals mx plus b. This is our slope-intercept form of a line. I'll tell you why it's called the slope-intercept form of a line, because when you look at it, you can tell immediately what's the slope and where does it intercept the y-axis. Here's, here's what I'm talking about. m is our slope. Not sure who came up with that. They didn't know how to spell, but that's not the point. Point is that m, whatever number is in front of the x, that will represent slope. b, the number out here on its own, including the sign, if it's positive or negative, that's going to be the place where the line crosses the y-axis, or in other words, the y-intercept. So let's look at it, take a look at an actual line and try and figure it out. It really is that simple. Find the slope of this line y equals 3x plus 4. Well, the number in front of x is 3, so 3 is our slope. If you said 3, you're right. It's really that easy. Whatever is in front of x is your slope. It could be a negative. It could be a fraction. It could be anything. The number in front of x, not including the x, our slope in this case is just 3. But whatever is in front of x, that's your slope. Let's do another one. Tell me what the slope is of this line. y equals 5x minus 3. Doesn't matter what's over here. As long as you have y isolated by itself right here, our slope is 5. The other important piece of information we do have here is that we've got negative 3. Do you remember what it was, what that represents from earlier? We said this is a slope-intercept form of a line. That represents where the line is crossing the y-axis, or in other words, the y-intercept. This line crosses the y-axis at negative 3 and has a slope of positive 5. We can tell that just by looking at this equation. We don't need to do anything else. We don't have to graph it. We can know pretty much what it looks like. and We can know exactly what the slope is and the y-intercept. I really like this form of a line. It's really a helpful, helpful form of an equation. Let's look at it backwards. If a line has a slope of 1 half and it crosses the y-axis at the point 0, negative 2, what is the equation for that line? Well, I know that y is equal to my slope times x plus my y-intercept, b. So I can write this equation as y equals 1 half, my slope of 1 half, x minus 2, right? because it crosses at the point 0, negative 2. Negative 2 is my y-intercept. And there we go. Like I said, you can have fractions in here. It's OK for slope to be a fraction. It's actually easy with a fraction. Rise over run. I mean, it's set up for you. All right, so slope being a fraction is not a problem. And our y-intercept being a negative, not a problem either. Just plug it in. That's your equation. All right, so now if we're asked to graph an equation and we're given a slope, or the slope-intercept form, what we would start off with is graphing the point of our intercept. So in this case, negative 2 is our intercept. That's the place where it's going to cross the y-axis. So I'm going to go to the point negative 2, and I'm going to circle it. I'm going to try and mark it pretty clearly right there. That's the point negative 2. We start at the origin. We go down 2. That's my x or my y-intercept. So that's the number that's on the end here. Negative 2, negative 2. Now I need to do the slope of 2 over 3. Remember what I said earlier, our slope is the rise over the run? If our slope is the rise, how much we go up. Over the run, how much we move side to side. I can go up 2 and then over 3. So I'm going to go up 2 and over 3. And then I'm going to put another point, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, there we go. I could go up two more and over three more if I want to and put a third point. That's going to be my continual slope. My slope is two-thirds. I rise two and I run three. All right? But I only really need two points to, to draw a line, so I don't have to continue labeling you know, all of, all of these lines using slope. But that's how I would figure it out. That's my line right there. I've graphed the line of 
two-thirds x minus two. There it is. It has a slope of rise two over three run, two over three, two over three. All right, and I can continue going up two and three, two and three, and every time I do that, it's going to hit a point on this line. All right, and that's how I would graph when I'm given the equation in slope-intercept form. The other way of looking at it is what is the equation of this line when I'm given a graph and I don't have the equation. So I'm going to, of course, first look for the point where it crosses the y-axis, or B. That's my y-intercept. So if I'm substituting into y equals mx plus B, I know for B, I'm going to substitute the value of 2. All right, so I'll just go ahead and plug that right into this equation, 2. And now what I need to find is the slope. Now, there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can see two points here. This is the point 0, 2, and this is the point 3, 0. So I can use the slope equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and solve, given those two points that I know. Or I can just look at the equation, because I have two pretty obvious points. I know with this point, to get from the first point to the second point, I go down 2. If I'm going down 2, that means that it would be a negative 2. And remember, slope is rise over run. So my, my rise is that I'm actually dropping two points. I'm going down two. So it's going to be a negative two. My run is that I'm moving forward or to the right, one, two, three. So I can draw that in there. That's going to be a positive three. So you can solve it using the slope equation. You'll get exactly the same answer. Or you can look at it and say it drops two negative 2, that's my rise, the change up and down, over my run, how much it changes left to right, and that would be a positive 3 because it's moving from left to right. Okay? So again, here I'll show you real quick how I would use the, the slope intercept or the slope equation to solve this one. For those of you who are die-hard slope equation users, that's fine. Um, I would write in the, the coordinates for my points, 3, 0, and my other point, 0, 2. Okay, I'm going to get rid of all of these markings here. Get rid of all of that. And those are the two points that I'm going to use. So um, it doesn't matter which point I use as my first point. I'll use this as um, x1 and y1, and this one is x2, y2. So y2 would be 0 minus y1, which is 2, and then x2. 2, which would be 3, minus y2, or y1, I'm sorry, which is 0. See that? I take my x value, that's x2, y2, that's x1, y1. So y2 minus y1, and x2 minus x1. And you'll notice 0 minus 2, negative 2, 3 minus 0, positive 3, same exact answer. All right, so you can use the slope equation, and that's fine. I just find it takes a little bit more time. If you have two distinct points and you can count, then generally speaking, you can just get a graph or get the slope just by looking at the graph. But if you really like the slope equation, you want to use it, you're more than happy to do that, and you'll get the exactly the same answer. So now I'm going to plug that in to my equation for slope and that will give me negative 2 over 3x plus 2. And that is the equation of this line.